The Mystery of the Rapture Revealed by Paul Only Part 1 The Biblical Rapture Defined Although skeptics can say that the word rapture does not appear in any passage of scripture, the statement is not correct in its intent. Rapture is a not Hebrew or Greek, the languages of the Bible. We see reference to the word rapture in the Catholic Latin Vulgate. The word rapture is seen in it by the Latin rapturo. Its Greek equivalent is harpezo, translated, caught up, as found in the 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, KJV. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, Greek. Harpezo, or Latin rapturo, together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so, shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, KJV. When translated into English, both rapturo and harpezo mean to be caught up or snatched away. Harpezo, Strong 726, is the word Paul used, coming from word roots that mean to raise from the ground, and to seize, or take for oneself, hinting at that the Lord's eagerness in claiming us for himself. So, while the Latin word rapturo does not appear in our Bibles, the event it describes certainly does. Please consider the text of Paul's two great and primary rapture passages, seen below with emphasis. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18 KJV, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery, Greek. Mustarian, a God-planned secret, we shall not all sleep be dead in the grave, but we of the living shall all be changed, fifty-two in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we of the living shall be changed. Fifty-three for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Fifty-four so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, KJV The verses above do not tell us when the rapture is to occur, only that it does. Although in 2 Thess, 2, we have a clear timeline to be discussed later. The rapture is not related to be confused with the Lord Jesus Christ's second coming on earth to save Israel's believers, which is to occur several years after the rapture. When the Lord comes for us, he does not come all the way to earth, but rather to meet us in the air, verse 17, that is in the first heaven we call the atmosphere. The rapture clearly is not another name for Jesus' second coming. These are two very different biblical events focusing upon the two different people groups of God, having two different eternal destinies. Consider these general points of distinction for understanding the rapture of all the grace age believers to heaven as compared with the second coming of Christ to earth. The rapture of the Gentile church called the body of Christ, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 17, and 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, occurs before the tribulation period, where in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18 it speaks of being caught up or raptured. 18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 16 The Lord himself, not his angels, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, 1 Thess 4 16. By contrast in Christ's second coming, he comes in wrath to purge out the rebels, when two-thirds of the earth's population will die before he established his millennial kingdom on earth. The rapture is an unscheduled, secret, imminent event. Jesus will come part way to the earth to meet us in the air, taking the members of the church that is called, the body of Christ, to be with him where he now is, in heaven, before the terrible seven years of the tribulation period begins. 
The rapture can be said to be an unscheduled and secret event because its specific day will remain unknown until it actually occurs. Yet, we know its timing is relative to other end-time events, such as the tribulation period and the millennial reign of Christ on earth. The rapture is imminent and could happen at any time. Christ's second coming to earth by contrast is to save the believing remnant of Israel and set up Christ's prophesied millennial kingdom. This occurs at the end of the tribulation period when 31. He in Christ shall send his angels and not himself, as seen of the rapture with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect of Israel from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24 verse 3 Note, in Matthew 15 verse 24 Jesus tells us he is speaking to Israel only. Note the difference in points 1 and 2 concerning who exactly is coming to gather his people. This is but one of many such contrasts to be noted from the scriptures involved with each. In Paul's 1 Thessalonians for verse 16, we see Christ himself coming to the air atmosphere to catch up a rapture both the dead and the living who are in Christ. In Matthew 24 verse 31 we see the Lord sending his angels to gather his elect at his second coming on earth. The second coming of Christ is onto the earth at the end of the tribulation this is scripturally well documented, long prophesied, scheduled public event whereby Jesus will come all the way onto earth with his angelic army, Matthew 25 verse 31. Jesus Christ will literally set foot on the Mount of Olives, Acts 1 verse 11, to then establish his millennial kingdom on planet earth. We say Christ's second coming is a scheduled public event, because the general time of his soon coming should be recognized by messianic elect believers of Israel at least three and a half years in advance. As they see the tribulation events unfold, Matthew 24 verses 32 to 37. They should recognize the fulfillment of Daniel 9 verse 27 that says, Antichrist will confirm the seven-year covenant with Israel to start the seven-year tribulation period. Then, three and a half years later, Antichrist will be seen to declare himself as God in the temple 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, to start the second half of the tribulation period called Great Tribulation Period. Everyone on earth will witness Jesus' second coming on earth. The coming of the Son of Man 2400 hours 27 will be immediately after the tribulation Matthew 24 verses 29 to 30. All the nations on earth will see him. 7 Behold he Jesus, the Son of Man who cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they Israel also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Revelation 1 verse 7, KJV Part 2, The One Qualification for Being Raptured to Heaven Our membership in the Body of Christ, and our participation in the rapture to heaven, is contingent upon our, having personally believed. Thereby we receive the benefit of the Lord Jesus' death of the cross as full payment for our entire sin debt. Christ's death of the cross about 2,000 years ago has already purchased full pardons for every soul on earth. However, we each must personally receive God's gift of salvation. By faith, in order to have our salvation ratified. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, nine not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9, KJV Because of Christ's cross work alone, believing, will secure their unconditional, irrevocable, pardon for all their sins past, present and future, CFFs, 1 colon 13 dash 14. Our full pardon is an act of God's pure grace, based upon the merit of the cross of Christ, for he alone could justify us rightly. Paul says simply, Believe on trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, Acts 16 verse 31. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, too by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Romans 5 verses 1 to 2. The rapture's sequence of events concerning us as grace-believing members of his body are as follows. All grace believers of this Gentile age of the grace of God will one day be caught up raptured to heaven. 1 Thess 4 17 
First, the dead who sleep in their graves shall be raised from the grave alive in their new, incorruptible, spirit bodies, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, philosophy 3 colon 20 dash 21, and also the bodies of those believers who are still alive when Christ comes in the air, shall be changed into their new spirit bodies, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. So both the dead and the living shall be caught up a Latin, rapturo, Greek. Harpezo, caught up, i.e., raptured in new spirit bodies, together to meet the Lord in the air of the sky, the atmosphere of the first heaven, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. Then going into our heavenly abode with Christ, we will forever be with the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. Our first stop after being raptured will be at the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, where we are to be judged of the Lord in order to be rewarded, all will receive at least the crown of life, then to be assigned to our place of service to forever reign with him in the heavenly places. 2 Timothy 2 verse 12, Ephesians 2 verse 8. Having this understanding of the rapture, we by contrast should note the important distinctions between the rapture of the body of Christ, T.O. heaven and that of Christ's second coming to earth to save Israel's believing remnant and set up his millennial kingdom on earth. The rapture of the church, which is his body, Ephesians 1 verses 22 to 23, will occur more than seven years earlier than Christ's second coming. Christ himself will come to take us to forever be with him. In the heavenly places. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle body were dissolved, we have a building of God, a new spirit body built of the Lord, and house, a spirit body, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, KJV By contrast, at Christ's second coming, He will become to earth to save Israel's believers, then to set up His millennial kingdom on earth, made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, KJV our rapture from planet Earth to heaven will occur in the twinkling of an eye, when the dead in Christ shall rise first, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, with their new, incorruptible, spirit bodies, and the living shall likewise be changed, transformed. Behold, I shew you a mystery, Greek. Mustarian, secret, we shall not all sleep a die, but we shall all be changed, be transformed, 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised from their graves incorruptible, and we the living shall be changed. 53 For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 54 So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, KJV. Note that concerning the rapture of the dead and the living, as seen above, Paul says he was disclosing a secret, saying, I shew you as mystery Greek. Mustarian, meaning a secret, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51. What is this particular secret that Christ revealed to Paul for us? Well, we know from scripture that the resurrection of the dead was not a secret. It can be found promised throughout the Old Testament prophecy, Daniel 12 verses 1 to 2. The secret is that some of those of the body of Christ who are raptured will not have died. The living believers will then be instantaneously raptured and transformed, taken alive into heaven with Christ. Just think, in a moment, one could be walking on earth in a frail human body, and in the very next moment he will be raptured to the heavenly places with Christ. In his new eternally alive spirit body, such as Jesus had in his resurrection. I offer you this one related caution concerning your study of the rapture. It would be fruitless to use the trumpet references in verses in the Gospels and the revelation to pin down the rapture's timing. The four Gospels of Jesus of Nazareth make no reference to the rapture of the Grace Age Gentile body of Christ. Only Paul speaks of our rapture to heaven. The trumpets of Matthew 24 verse 31, Rev 8 13, 9 14 that Jesus spoke of all apply only to Israel only in its time of the tribulation period, and at Christ's second coming. 
There are many trumpets mentioned in the Bible, but only Paul's trump of God applies to the body of Christ being raptured to heaven. Paul's words are to us and for us, as Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13. He tells us the trump of sound of the trumpet scene, in 1 Cor 15 52, and 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, will be the last trumpet, that we believers will hear before we are either raised incorruptible from the grave or, in the case of the living believers, they shall be changed. 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery secret, we shall not all sleep be dead, but we shall all be changed. 52 At the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we of the living believers shall be changed, transformed. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52 KJV 16 With the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first from their graves. 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17, KJV Since Paul's 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4 rapture passages describe the same things, it is safe to assume that the 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52, last trump, is the same one mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16, above. They are not pointing us toward any event other than the rapture. These two references, together, tell us that there will be one last generation of grace-believing members of the body of Christ, who will not die, rather they will suddenly be changed from their earthly physical form into their new, eternal, heavenly, spirit form, made fit for dwelling in the heavenly places. Part 3 Does 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 concern us spiritual falling away, or our physical departure to heaven? Please put your thinking cap on as we study and digest the first eight verses of 2 Thessalonians 2 in part 3, and 4 of this now enlarged 12-part study series. We are herein considering the fact that the rapture is undeniably to occur pre-tribulation. As you will see, carefully noting context is of extreme importance in Bible hermeneutics, method of interpretation. The context Paul sets up in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 2 causes us to differ from the spiritual falling away, interpretation of 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, KJV. Verses 1 to 2 clearly refer to the Lord's coming to gather his grace believers at the rapture. Here in the first three verses of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, below, Paul is replying to how that the Thessalonian believers had become shaken and troubled. These Gentiles had first believed only about a year earlier, and been converted to Paul's gospel of the grace of God that promises the rapture. They were clearly taught the truth of the rapture by Paul as seen in 1 Thess for colon 13-18. But now they were shaken by a forged letter as if it were from Paul, v2, which contradicted Paul's earlier teaching. Thus, in 2 Thess, 2 colon 1-8 Paul is correcting the lies by reiterating the truth to correct their understandings concerning the order of events to come relative to the rapture coming first, before the men of sin being revealed in the tribulation period. Inappropriately, the text of verse 3 as seen in the KJV does not clearly represent Paul's intent, which is clearly seen by verses 1 and 2 and verse 3 in its Greek text and considered in its context seen below. I struck out the words a falling away, needing correction as noted in the red parenthesis that follows. 1 Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him unto Christ at the rapture, to that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit a lying spirit, nor by word of lies being preached, nor by a forged letter as if from us as if from Paul and company, as a saying that the day of Christ is at hand. That day of the wrath of the Lamb, Revelation 6 verse 16. 3 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day the tribulation period shall not come, except until there come a falling away the physical departure first, and that men of sin antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 KJV. What Paul is trying to say in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 is that first, before the men of sin antichrist is revealed, and before the tribulation period begins, there will be the physical departure of the church, the church called the body of Christ, by our rapture to dwell with Christ eternal in the heavens 2 COR 5 colon 1 KJV. Paul is writing to these beleaguered Thessalonians who had become deceived, v 3 a, do misinformation of lies from forged letters allegedly from the apostle Paul indicating that the day of the Lord, the tribulation period, had already begun. 
In 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3 Paul explains how they could not possibly be in the tribulation period because 1. They were still here on planet earth, and 2. The moon of sin, had not yet been revealed. In other words, the Thessalonians were not in the tribulation period, because the tribulation period itself will not take place until there is first, the physical removal of the church from planet earth to heaven via the rapture. Verse 3 presents an important point of contention among some Bible scholars. For the past 100 years or so theologians have misinterpreted the Greek word apostasia in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, translating it as a falling away, first as seen in the KJV and most Bibles since the KJV. But as we proceed you will see how the Greek apostasia proton is more correctly translated to mean the departure first, which is how it was translated in the seven earliest English language translations. The reliable Greek received text upon which the KJV is based is correct. But the issue is a matter of interpreting the Greek apostasia proton in its full context. It has been mistranslated in the KJV as if it were a spiritual falling away of the church first, as an apostasy, a spiritual falling from the doctrinal truth of the faith. Yes, certainly today's Christendom has hugely become spiritually apostatized even more over the past 75 years. They have forsaken the truth of the Pauline pure grace, gospel of the grace of God, just as men did even in Paul's day. Paul, as the apostle to the Gentiles, wrote telling us how that all men had forsaken him and his Christ-given revelations for the Gentiles. Considering the early, pre-KJV, English language Bible translations will help and inform us. Dr. Tommy Ice wrote that all of the first seven old English language translations rendered the noun, apostasia proton, in 2 Thess 2 colon 3 as either the departure first or the departing first. The belief that the word apostasia proton actually speaks of a the physical departure first. In fact, even Jerome's Latin translation from around the time of AD 400, known as the Latin Vulgate, also renders the Greek apostasia using the Latin word decessio, meaning departure. 8. See Dr. Ice's summary below. You might then ask, why did the King James Version stray from the already well-established English translation standard of the departure first? The answer is that the KJV translators were making a polemic, controversial, retaliation against the Catholic Reims Bible of 30 years earlier. The Catholics had translated the Greek, apostasia, as a revolt in order to accuse the Protestant reformers of revolting against the authority of the Catholic Church. It was about 30 years after the Catholic Reims Bible of 1586 had translated the Greek, apostasia, as a revolt, controversially referring to the revolt of the Protestant Reformation, that we then have the KJV in 1611. The KJV was launched controversially translating the 2 Thess 2 colon 3 Greek, apostasia proton, as a falling away first, thereby referring to the Catholic Church's falling away from the core doctrinal truth of salvation by grace through faith alone cf Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. Note that while the underlying Greek text is the same for the KJV and the several earlier English languages translations, i.e., Wycliffe, Coverdale, Geneva, et al., the politics of the day appears to have entered into the KJV translation by ignoring the context that is set by Paul in 2 Thess 2 colon 1-2 concerning our gathering together unto him at the rapture. Part for the apostasia proton is the departure first. Picking up from part 3, in 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 4 below, the issue we are considering is this. Should the Greek apostasia proton, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, which in the KJV is translated as a falling away first, be more properly be translated in its context to be a sudden or instantaneous physical departure first, meaning the rapture of the body of Christ to dwell eternal in the heavens to COR 5 colon 1b. In that case it will becomes quite clear that the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, is to occur first. Before that man of sin, the Antichrist, is revealed, V3b, thereby then also starting of the seven-year tribulation period of Dan 9 colon 26-27. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to the rapture, and by our gathering together unto him at the rapture, to that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by a satanic spirit, nor by word, nor by a forged pseudo-letter as if from us as if from Paul and company, as that the day of Christ Revelation 6 verse 16, the wrath of the Lamb Christ, 
in the tribulation, is at hand. 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day of the wrath of the Lamb, shall not come, except there come a falling away first Greek. Apostasia proton, meaning the instantaneous physical departure first, and that men of sin antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition, for who opposeth God and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he antichrist as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 4 KJV The context of 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, considering 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 4, certainly suggests the rapture is the issue at hand in V3, as it is being addressed by Paul to quell the fears of the Thessalonians who had been fed fake news, lies, in Paul's absence. We should note that most every chapter of 1 and 2 Thessalonians refers the rapture using various terms. Then, why would Paul in 2 Thessalonians now switch from the rapture to the matter of the obvious gradual spiritual falling away from the faith, that most have observed? By contrast, 1 COR 15,51-55 tells us, the departure, or rapture will be in the twinkling of an eye instantaneous. Behold, I shew you a mystery, Greek. Mustarian, secret, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed, 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we of the living believers shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 52, KJV. If we simply use basic contextual translation for verse 3 in the context of verses 1 to 2, which speaks of our gathering together unto him, then we can see why the earlier English language Bibles, before the KJV, all translated the Greek apostasia proton, in V3, as the departure first, meaning the rapture before the men of sin is revealed. T, he men of sin antichrist, will be seen in part 7 of the study series, riding on the white horse among the three others of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The Bible tells us about the rider on the white horse, is a geopolitical leader, who is referenced as the beast, or the antichrist, Revelation 6 verses 1 to 2, 1 John 2 verse 18, for colon 3. By properly using the term, the departure first, in 2 Thess 2 colon 3, we have a very sound basis for the pre-tribulation rapture. The idea of a falling away first for the Greek apostasia erroneously promotes the idea of a gradual spiritual or doctrinal falling away, but this cannot be the case. Consider how that the church has been spiritually and doctrinally falling away from the faith, throughout its existence, just as Israel was continually falling away from and rebelling against the Lord throughout the Old Testament. What best applies in translating apostasia proton, in the context of 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 8 is that the physical departure first, which we call the rapture, as seen below with my comments in parenthesis. We need to pay attention to Paul's explanation of the timeline of events to come after the departure, or rapture of the church in all eight verses contextually surrounding verse 3. Note the detail below with my highlighted insertions in parenthesis. 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him references the rapture of 1 the 4 colon 13 dash 18. 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by a false of spirit, nor by word of false teaching that was contradicting what Paul had already taught the Thessalonians verse 5, nor by forged a letter as if from us as if from Paul and company, as that the day of Christ a day of the Lord, called the tribulation is at hand. 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day of the tribulation shall not come, except there come a falling away first, the departure first, and that men of sin antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition. For who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he antichrist, as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. 5. Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. 6. And now ye know what withholdeth restrains, that he, Antichrist, might be revealed only in his time. The Holy Spirit within the members of the body of Christ, holds back or retrains the time of the Antichrist being revealed in the tribulation, verses 7 to 8. The Holy Spirit must first be taken out of the way, verse 7. The fact that the Antichrist had not been revealed and the grace believers who had the Holy Spirit in them were still on earth means the rapture and the time of the day of the Lord's wrath, the tribulation, had not yet come. 
7 For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he the Holy Spirit, who now letteth will let, until he the Holy Spirit, be taken out of the way. 8 And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 to 8 KJV. We note how that the Thessalonians had originally heard the truth of the rapture from Paul when Paul first visited them, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18. This truth was to be a comfort to them, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18. However in 2 colon 3 we see how that satanic deception had come to them by devilish lying teachers, and at least one forged letter. As if it was from Paul. The letter contradicted what Paul had originally taught the Thessalonians earlier, as seen here in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 1 to 5, KJV. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Two for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, the tribulation, wrath of the Lamb, so cometh as a thief in the night. Three for when they of the lost shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. For but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Five ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 1 to 5, KJV. Yet now the Thessalonians had become shaken and troubled. The lies told them they had missed the rapture, and were now in the day of the wrath of the Lamb, meaning the tribulation, was now upon them. But in 2 Thess, Paul is again giving them the proper timeline, as to what must happen first, that is, the departure rapture first, and then only after the rapture will the Antichrist be revealed. So, what the Thessalonians were experiencing was not the fullness of times, not the day of the wrath of the Lamb, that is to come in the tribulation, not the reign of Christ in his millennial kingdom, that is to come on earth after the tribulation period ends. They were simply experiencing the mystery of iniquity, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7, which was already at work, even as it is in our wicked day. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he the Holy Spirit, who now letteth will let, until he the Holy Spirit, be taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 As us today, the Thessalonians were living in this present evil world, as it is in the nasty now, and now with Satan currently operating as the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. The Thessalonians needed to know the timeline, truth from Paul, and be able to count on the blessed hope, Titus 2 verse 13, of the coming greater glory that shall be revealed in us by our resurrection at the rapture. For I reckon count on the fact that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8 verse 18, Colossians 1 verse 27. Part 5, How exactly is the day of the Lord different from the day of Christ? The day of the Lord is also referred to as the wrath of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, in Revelation 6 verse 16. This is different from the day of Christ coming at the rapture, very different. The verse below describes men on earth trying to escape from the wrath of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him the Lamb that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, seventeen for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6 verses 16 to 17, KJV. Contrast the wrath of the Lamb in that day of tribulation judgments over against that of the meekness of the Lamb of God upon the cross, John 1 verse 29. At Calvary's cross, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God offered no resistance. He was abused but made no complaint. He bore it all in patience and majestic silence. Jesus, as the Lamb of God, as the sacrificial Lamb for sin, could have stepped down from the cross at any time. He could have consumed his enemies with a single word. The same angels who sing praise to him who is worthy in Revelation 5, were at his beck and call ready to come to his aid should he have desired them to do so. In spite of all the torment and anguish, Jesus stayed on the cross in obedience to the Father, dying for us. But in Christ's second coming, he will come in the day of the Lord's wrath to purge out from among you Israel, the rebels, Ezekiel 20 verse 38 when two-thirds of the earth's population, including two-thirds of Israel, will die before he establishes his millennial kingdom on earth. Israel's prophet, Zephaniah, 
tells us the day of wrath, is the day of trouble for Israel and Israel's enemies. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, 18 neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land of Israel shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them Israel's enemies that dwell in the land of Israel. Zephaniah 1 verses 15 and 18 Peter writes to Israel describing the day of the Lord at the culmination of the seven-year tribulation. Will come as a thief noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein the creations of men, shall be burned up. 11 Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, 2 Peter 3 verses 10 to 11. The term, the day of the Lord, appears 25 times in the Old Testament as being promised to Israel. These scriptures describe, the day of the Lord includes all the tribulation judgments, and then Jesus' second coming, Isaiah 2 verses 12 to 21, Amos 5 verses 18 to 20, Joel 1 verse 15, 2 colon 1 dash 2, 10 to 11, 30 to 31. No person wants to go through the day of the Lord, as it will be a terrible time for those who refuse to freely receive Christ's atoning sacrifice of the cross for their salvation from perdition. The day of the Lord is the terrible time of the tribulation, but not the day of Christ, it is the wonderful day of our rapture to heaven. The day of the Lord is that day in which the Lord pours out his just judgment upon Israel's rebels and a rebellious world. This of 2 Peter 3 verses 10 to 11 comes at the end of Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation period with the judgments at his second coming. We may compare the day of the Lord with the day of Christ as follows. The awful day of the Lord is a time of terror, darkness, and wrath. It is a day of visitation, ISA, 10.3, a day of the wrath of the Lord, Ezekiel.19, called the great day of the Lord, Zephaniah 1.14. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. Ezekiel 7 verse 19, KJV. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. Zephaniah 1 verse 14, KJV. The day of the Lord, 1, condemns the rejectors of Christ, and 2, it is a day of judgment and vengeance, and 3, of earthly despair, for to be feared and dreaded. The Wonderful Day of Christ by the Rapture The day of Christ appearing at the rapture is a uniquely Pauline phrase as seen in Philippians 1 verses 6 and 10, 16, 2 Tim 1 18, 2, 4 colon 8, 1 COR 1 colon 8. It is seen as the day of rejoicing, day of rewards, and day of our eternal reigning with Christ in the heavenly places, 2 Timothy 2 verse 12, Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 4, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1 verse 6, KJV. That ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere, and without offense till the day of Christ, Philippians 1 verse 10, KJV. For our conversation Old English for citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 21 who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3 verses 20 to 21, KJV. The day of Christ is 1, for the church, the body of Christ, 2, a day of blessing, 3, our heavenly hope expectation, and to be eagerly anticipated. Our blessed hope is an expression of our confident expectation of the day of Christ, and it is to be a comfort to all of us as we await his coming to the clouds in the air atmosphere to bring us home to heaven. Thus, Paul wrote, Wherefore comfort one another with these words of the pre-tib rapture. 1 Thess, for 18, for colon 13-18. True grace believing Christians of this age of the dispensation of the grace of God are not destined to go through the awful day of the wrath of the Lamb, the seven-year tribulation period. Paul wrote of grace believers. 
being now justified by his of Christ's of blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans 5 verse 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 10 Who died for us, that, whether we wake or sleep, that we should live, Greek Zao, together with him. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 9 to 10 Paul says the rapture will occur suddenly, in a moment, as in the twinkling of the eye. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump a last, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we of the living shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52 KJV The word moment in is the Greek atomos, meaning as small as an atom thus, this moment, is likened to the tiny amount of time for the rapture to suddenly occur. Strong's exhaustive says this moment is an atom of time. Then also, the imminency of the rapture means it could occur in any moment. We have no prophecy needing to be fulfilled first. By contrast we do have events that are prophesied to occur relatively soon after the rapture, such as the revealing of the Antichrist and his signing to confirm the covenant of Daniel 9 verse 27 to protect Israel for seven years. God wanted the rapture to be imminent because we should then live our daily lives in view of his soon coming, expecting that which we read below. 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery, Greek. Mustarian, a God-planned secret, we shall not all sleep, be dead in the grave, but we of the living shall all be changed, 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we of the living shall be changed. 53 For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 54 So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, KJV Today, Jesus' second coming and in wrath and judgment, is still delayed because the rapture is delayed, awaiting the completion of the number of the members of the body of Christ, Romans 11 verse 25. This present age is not the kingdom, nor is it the prophesied wrath of God, which will appear with the Antichrist, after the rapture. So our coming day of Christ, Philippians 2 verse 16, at the rapture is not the day of the Lord's wrath, Zephaniah 1 verse 18, nor the day of the wrath of the Lamb. Revelation 6 verse 16, our rapture has not passed, it is just delayed for an unspecified time, until the body of Christ is filled up with all the souls of those whom God has foreknown, Romans 8 verse 30, blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Romans 11 verse 25 The main point of this article is the delay of the forthcoming blessing of the rapture of his body, to dwell, eternal in the heavens, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, which currently forestalls the end-time tribulation judgment of Israel, and the world to occur with Christ's second coming to set up his millennial kingdom on earth. For our conversation citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, twenty-one who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3 verses 20-21 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up raptured, Greek. Harpezo, Latin, repeamer together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so, shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 18. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we of the living shall be changed. 53 For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. 54 So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, Greek, Hades, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15 verses 52 to 55 God's promise of our gathering together unto Christ 
In the air, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17, and our rapture to heaven will occur to end in the dispensation of the grace of God, but it is still delayed for an unspecified time period. Paul tells us the rapture is delayed until the fullness, the full number of the Gentiles become in Romans 11 verse 25, thereby completing the body of Christ just before the rapture. Just imagine, some one person will be the very last genuine grace age believer to be added to the Gentile body of Christ just before the rapture. Of course, we know that all grace believers, the dead and the living, will likewise go home to heaven, this information is to be a comfort to us, and we are to be ever mindful of this truth. Part 6 The Timing of the Pre-Tribulation Rapture of the Body of Christ to Heaven in these days of uncertainty and decline in the world's stability like never before, Bible-believing Christians should be looking to the promise of the pre-tribulation rapture as a comfort. Paul's rather complete explanations of the rapture are seen in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18 and 1 Cor 15 51-55. Paul closed 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18 using the words, Wherefore comfort one another with these words of the rapture of 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18. In the course of this study, I will explain how that the rapture, or the catching away, of all Gentile grace age believers of this age to heaven will occur before the seven-year tribulation begins. Some ask, does scripture actually promise a pre-tribulation rapture, or is it an opinion? They may challenge us to cite Bible verses that would lead a person to believe the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. Some skeptics then say the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture began as the creation of John Nelson Darby in about 1830. This is not true as the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine is clearly seen in the Pauline scriptures, now nearly 2000 years ago. To those who ask, the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine of Darby is so young, how can it be biblical, I reply, then on that basis we could say the recovery of our most core faith doctrine of justification by faith, is not illegitimate only because it dates back the 14-1500s. The fact is that it is only since the end of the 1000-year dark middle ages ended, during which time the pure unadulterated Bible truth we stand upon today was kept shrouded by the Roman Catholic Church, locked away in dusty libraries. Only since then, do we have the recovery of many important fundamental doctrinal Bible truths that Christ originally revealed to Paul. These fundamental Bible truths came to light with the Protestant reformers, including John Wycliffe, John Huss, and Martin Luther. The fact is that the pre-tribulation rapture is just as critical to our faith today as justification by faith, which was recovered through the 14th and 15th centuries. Actually, there are many ancient manuscripts dating back to the 2nd century that when translated from Latin have revealed that many of the early church fathers held to the very same pre-trib rapture doctrine as Darby, who only later rediscovered the same. Consider, Irenaeus, who was born during the first half of the 2nd century, held the belief that the rapture took place prior to the end times tribulation. So did Cyprian, 200 AD, 258 AD, as a bishop, overseer, of the church in Carthage, and others also. Dr. Tommy I cites them and many other such pre-Darby pre-tribulation rapture statements in his recent lecture. The pre-trib rapture doctrine provides believers security and comfort. All who believe and appreciate Paul's 1 Thessalonians for verses 13 to 18 concerning the promised rapture of both the dead and the living members of the church, the body of Christ, before the tribulation period. Below we have some of Paul's words of assurance and security that plainly say we are not subject to God's wrath to come in the seven-year tribulation period. How can Paul say this? We have this truth is only because Jesus Christ took upon himself the wrath of God on our behalf, suffering and dying at the cross for our sins. Our sin debt account is stamped paid in full. Now consider these Pauline verses. 10 And to wait for his Son of God from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even that is Jesus, which delivered us already from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10, KJV. 9 For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, KJV. 13 But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep and dead in their graves, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 14 For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
even so them also which sleep, have died in Jesus will God bring with him. 15 For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain alive unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent precede them which are asleep dead in their graves. 16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18, KJV. 20 For our conversation Old English for citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 21 Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, resurrected spirit body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3 verses 20 to 21, KJV. 13 Looking for that blessed hope expectation, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, Titus 2 verse 13, KJV. Keep in mind that the pre-tribulation rapture of the Gentile Church, which is called the Body of Christ, is only written of by the Apostle Paul in his epistles. The pre-tribulation rapture is another one of several secret doctrines that Christ revealed directly to Paul for those of this age of the dispensation of grace of God. 51 Behold, I, Paul, shew you a mystery Greek, must Arian, meaning a God-ordained secret, we shall not all sleep be dead in the grave, but we shall all be changed, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51 KJV. Then also there was also revealed to Paul, the revelation of the mystery secret of the of the cross, 2 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8, and the fellowship of the mystery secret, Ephesians 3 verse 9, of the joint body of Jew and Gentile in Christ without racial distinction during today's the dispensation of the grace of God. Then there is the mystery of the indwelling Christ, Colossians 1 verse 25. 25 Whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you Gentiles to fulfill Greek. Plural complete the word of God, 26 Even the mystery secret, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, the believers, 27 To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1 verses 25 to 27, KJV. Since Paul is the one apostle to the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13, he, as the Moses of today's grace dispensation, conveyed the commandments, instructions of the Lord to the body of Christ, 1 C.O.R. 1437. It is Paul alone who writes of our destiny relative to our rapture and the tribulation period, so as to dwell with Christ, eternal in the heavens, 2 C.O.R. 5 colon 1. Thus, we are not destined to return to earth as our abode. The kingdom of a from heaven to come on earth is promised only to Israel. Therein, Jesus, the twelve Jewish apostles to Israel, not Paul, will sit on twelve thrones. Israel is never promised heaven as their eternal abode. Israel, as the Lord's bride, kings, and nation of priests, is destined to co-reign eternally with Christ on the earth in the kingdom. 10 And the Lord hast made us, Israel, unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 5 verse 10, KJV 6 Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelation 20 verse 6, KJV Having this understanding, let us now consider that there are today several different eschatological views on the subject of the end-time timeline, and the placement of the rapture of his body, relative to the tribulation period. Consider these three, three, erroneous views among those of so-called Christendom today. Some are amillennialists, such as the Roman Catholic Church, who doctrinally rejects both the pre-tribulation rapture and millennial reign of Christ. Citing several Catholic quotes. Most amillennialists deny that the Antichrist will be a real man, and they deny a literal tribulation period. There also are pre wrist who hold that the Bible's end times prophecies of the apocalypse have already been either nearly or entirely fulfilled. Preterism is the view that all of the prophecies concerning the end of the age occurred in 70 AD, when Israel was destroyed by the Roman general Titus, and they say there are no end time events on the horizon. 
Then there are some who believe the rapture of the church does not occur until at least mid-tribulation, which is halfway or three and a half years into the seven-year tribulation period, calling it the pre-wrath rapture. Various versions of what they call the pre-wrath rapture say the rapture is to occur sometime after the sixth seal and before the seventh seal. The pre-wrath view was first taught by Robert Van Campen in the 1970s. Then in the early 1990s Marvin J. Rosenthal published the book The Pre-Wrath Rapture of the Church, which popularized the pre-wrath rapture. They erroneously say the Christians must go through at least the first three and a half years of the tribulation's seven-year period. As you will see in part seven of this series, the sufferings to occur under the four horsemen of the apocalypse as seen in the first four seals, along with the sixth seal scriptures, contradict this view. The main problem with the eschatology, the end times view, of the above three examples is that they do not rightly divide the word of truth as Paul instructs us in 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. They take that which applies to the nation Israel only and try to apply it to the Gentile church, the body of Christ. The three views listed above are all false understandings. The first two views are so blatantly wrong that as I progress in this series, I particularly only want to point out the error of item 3 above whereby the pre-wrath rapture wrongly times the rapture to occur sometime during the sixth seal and just before the seventh seal is opened. We will see the horrific sufferings of the first half of the tribulation period in part 7 when Antichrist and the four horsemen of the apocalypse appear on the world stage. Part 7 The Seven Seal Judgments begins with the four horsemen. Before we consider the first five of the seven seals and the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which open the tribulation period it would be helpful to first understand the basis of the seven-year tribulation period itself. Daniel's 70th week prophecy says Israel would endure a 70th week of years under Gentile rule for a total of 490 years, 70 by 7 or 70 weeks of 7 years. Taken together these years are biblically called the times of the Gentiles. Luke 21 verse 24 these 490 years are the penalty for Israel's disobedience and debt due for not permitting the land to rest every seventh year, Leviticus 26 verse 34. History records that to date Israel has been held under Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome for a total of 483 of the 490 years prophesied. The seven-year tribulation period is the remainder of the 400, and 90 years prophesied for Israel to be under Gentile rule. The titles, Daniel's 70th week, a week of seven years, and the time of Jacob's trouble, Matthew 24 verses 15 to 31, are titles for the seven-year tribulation period. Daniel's 70th week, or the seven-year tribulation period make it clear that the tribulation period concerns the nation Israel only. The tribulation has no application to the Gentile grace believers of this age of the dispensation of the grace of God. This is in perfect accord with Paul's instruction for us to study by rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, divide what applies to Israel from the Gentile body of Christ. Having the foregoing, please now read Revelation 6 verses 1 to 17 in the KJV, which concerns the first five of the seven seals. As you will see the first five seals quickly develop into major sufferings of blood, death, and martyrdom under the overarching wrath of God, beginning with the Antichrist on the white horse. Obviously, God is over all that we see in the Revelation period. In the book of Revelation, we have 1, the wrath of men seen in the wars early on in the tribulation, 2, then the wrath of Satan appears fully through the Antichrist at the midpoint in the tribulation, and 3, then late in the tribulation we see the direct wrath of God. The unleashing of Antichrist occurs when the Holy Spirit is removed with the believers of the body of Christ are raptured to heaven. Antichrist cannot become manifested to freely operate on earth until the Lord withdraws the Holy Spirit presence in and through the body of Christ on earth as seen here. 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except unless there come a falling away the departure of the rapture first, and that men of sin Antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition, for who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. 5. Remember ye not, that, when I was yet with you, I, Paul, told you these things. 6. And now ye know what withholdeth, i.e., the Holy Spirit, that he, Antichrist, 
might be revealed only in his time. 7 For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he the Holy Spirit, who now currently letteth will let permit, until he the Holy Spirit as restrainer, be taken out of the way. 8 And then shall that wicked wicked one, Antichrist be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 8 KJV The effects of the Antichrist's progressive ascendancy to power are seen by the four horsemen of Revelation 6 verses 1 to 8. The fourth horse, verses 7 to 8, is the pale horse whose rider is named Death. With the sixth seal 25% of the earth's population dies before the seventh seal. Thankfully, the raptured dead and living believers of the body of Christ will be saved out of this world beforehand when Jesus himself appear in the air sky, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18. The four horsemen seen in the first four seals open the seven-year tribulation period. There are three series of seven levels each bringing the intensifying tribulations to come upon Israel and the world throughout the seven-year tribulation period. No doubt he first half of the tribulation period, three and a half years, will be less horrific than the second half. Nevertheless, 25% of the living will die in the first half of the tribulation, Revelation 6 verses 7 to 8. So all of this seven-year period certainly bears the wrath of God coming upon this rebellious evil world. In Revelation 6 the Lord Jesus, the Lamb slain, opens the first six seals which address death coming on earth through intensifying tribulation. Initially they appear as somewhat common calamities, but also with some uncommon physical disturbances on earth and in the sky. These include chaos, great civil unrest, great war, famine, super earthquakes, recall 25% of the population will die in that time. These may sound common to us, but they will become intensified with the opening of the early first four seals that Jesus opens to include the four horsemen. Jesus of Nazareth had told Israel these must occur. 6 And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye the remnant of Jewish believers be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 7 For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. 8 All these are the beginning of sorrows. 9 Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you the Jews, and ye the nation Israel, shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24 verses 6 to 9, KJV Now let us consider the first six seals. I will briefly summarize the events that begin with the four horsemen. The four horsemen of the apocalypse described in Revelation 6 arrive early in first three, and a half years of the seven-year tribulation. The first seal Revelation 6 verses 1 to 2, with Jesus' opening of the first seal, the tribulation period begins on earth. We know Antichrist is to confirm S the covenant of Dan 927 to begin the tribulation, initially bringing peace for a short time. Israel would soon recognize they had made a pact with the devil for false security, Isaiah 28 verse 15. With that begins a seven-year tribulation that follows the rapture of the Gentile church, in which God brings judgment to earth in order to purge, reclaim, and renew the earth from the hand of Satan. Some short time, perhaps as many as six months after the church, the body of Christ, is in heaven, all these divinely shaped calamities will come upon the earth. The rider on of the first seals, White Horse, is a geopolitical leader who is referenced elsewhere as the Antichrist, 1 John 2 verse 18, for colon 3. He will speak smooth words and insert himself into the world's leadership following the rapture to bring order out of the resultant chaos. Think of the chaos ensuing with the rapture of so many. Notably, there is no mention of an arrow with his bow, indicating the bloodless nature of his initial coup, 6 colon 2. He will claim victory and peace, represented by his white horse and crown. He will quickly gain worldwide power. Consider the role of the religious scarlet harlot religion, likely Rome, who will give Antichrist credibility in the eyes of the world much as we see Pope Francis is a socialist activist. He will initially assume power through recognition and substance, but without resorting to violence initially. The ensuing sense of peace throughout the world, though, will prove false. The second seal, Revelation 6 verses 3 to 4, the fiery red horse, 6 colon 4, 
of the second seal, verse 3, represents bloodshed and chaos. The world devolves into violence, with people beginning to kill one another, 6 colon 4. I believe the chaos that will set the stage for the world to cry out for the one world, government and leader the Antichrist. He will transition from pretending to be peaceful to wielding a great sword, verse 4, representative of his power to slay people. A parallel to Hitler is instructive because the German Chancellor rose to power amid the turbulence of the Great Depression and the burden of reparations to pay for the First World War, thus building consensus and support among the German masses before his administration devolved into violence under a totalitarian dictatorship. The Third Seal, Revelation 6 verses 5 to 6, the opening of the Third Seal heightens the world's chaos, bringing economic instability to the tribulation period. This is depicted by a black horse whose rider holds a set of scales, verse 5. It appears that inflation will be so severe that a measure of wheat and three measures of barley each will cost a day's wage to ration a family. The day's wage of a penny, Greek. Denarian, denarius, in Roman currency, 6 colon 6. So, in addition to seizing control politically, Antichrist will take over the world's economic order. Whether global economic instability sets the stage for his control, or is the result of his control is unclear. The fourth seal, Revelation 6 verses 7 to 8, the fourth seal, verse 7, with its pale green horse and its ominous rider named, Death, verse 8, brings an astonishingly severe judgment. In the aftermath of social conflict, a fourth of the Earth's population, 25%, will die from a combination of violence, famine, plague, and attacks by wild animals, verse 8. If this occurred today, the fourth seal would bring the demise of approximately 2 billion people. The fifth seal, Revelation 6 verses 9 to 10 The fifth seal appears to be a parenthetical reaction to the killings of the fourth seal, and the death to follow in the sixth and seventh seals which ushers in the seven trumpet judgments. We know that after the rapture of the Gentile, body of Christ, no souls of the martyred are to be resurrected until after the tribulation period, Revelation 20 verse 6. So, this fifth seal involves the figurative voice, verse 10, of the souls of those slaughtered by the Antichrist, verse 9, for their faith during the early tribulation period. The martyr's lifeblood no doubt is in the ground and referred to as under the altar 6 colon 9, as the place of their martyrdom. This is much like the Lord speaking figuratively of the voice of dead Abel's, blood cried unto me God from the ground, after Cain killed him. Revelation 6 verses 10 to 11 I expect that the Lord's words recorded here in John's book of the Revelation are as his answer to the blood cry of these martyrs, verse 10, to bolster the faith of the yet living believers who may read John's revelation as they live and are martyred during the tribulation period. 10 And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Revelation 6 verse 10, KJV the Lord replies, rest a little while longer, until God finishes unleashing his temporal judgments on the earth. 11. It was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Revelation 6 verse 11, KJV. They then are reminded that even though God's justice is delayed at times, it always comes. These martyrs must include many Gentiles who must have come to faith under Israel's kingdom gospel preached during the tribulation. Again, all this occurs after the rapture of the Gentile body of Christ, who will have been removed from planet Earth some years earlier. Part 8 The Sixth Seal Now we come to the Sixth Seal, Revelation 6 verses 12 to 17, which brings the heightened early tribulations that sound a lot like the beginning of sorrows, that Jesus spoke of here in Luke 21 verses 8 to 11, Matt 24 colon 5 dash 11. Compare Rev 12 to 17 below with Luke 21 verses 8 to 11, Matt 24 colon 5 dash 11. 12 And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, 13, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, 
and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every freeman, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, 16, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, 17 for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6 verses 12 to 17, KJV. Jesus speaking to Israel said, 8 and he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near go ye not therefore after them. 9 But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. 10 Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, 11 And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Luke 21 verses 8 to 11. 5 For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 6 And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 7 For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in divers places. 8 All these are the beginning of sorrows. 9 Then shall they deliver you, Israel's believers, up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. 10 And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. 11 And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Matt 24,5-11 Let us now look further at the sixth seal, in some more detail. The sixth seal, Revelation 6 verses 12 to 17, first read the verses, and note that there is no mention of rapture, no catching away, or resurrection as pre-wrath rapture folks say occurs here before the seventh seal. Why? This is because the rapture occurs before any part of the tribulation period begins or seals are opened. The sixth seal does begin a transition toward the last three, and a half years called the Great Intensified Tribulation. But even before we see disruptions of nature in the form of a most violent earthquake, verse 12, the sun turning black like sackcloth, which is likely because of volcanoes erupting and spewing ash that blocks sunlight and giving the moon as red appearance, verse 12, Luke 21 verses 8 to 11, Matt 24 colon 5 dash 11, with the moving of mountains and islands, 614. Then the stars of heaven fell to the earth, shaken of a mighty wind, verse 13, likely has reference to Revelation 12, below. Note that the angels, in this case the fallen angels, are often referred to as stars in the Bible. Thus the stars of heaven falling likely has reference to the devil and his angels being cast from the second or lower heaven down into the earth, for he the devil knoweth that he hath but a short time. 7 And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels ate and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. 9 And the great dragon Lucifer was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the sea! For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9, 12. The woman Israel's remnant, verse 14, will flee to God's protection the mountains of Petra in Edom, an area not under the Antichrist, Dan 11.41. She, Israel's believing remnant, escaped Satan's increasing attacks for three and a half years, v. 14, even while Antichrist's otherwise world over control intensifies unto the battle of Armageddon. Revelation 6 verses 15 to 16, people of all social classes, kings and nobles along with every slave and free person, verse 15, run for their lives, knowing they are under God's judgment. This is evident from their cry to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, verse 16. Still, we see no account of a rapture at that time as the pre-wrath people would claim. But while it would be logical for individuals under judgment to call for mercy and salvation, these people's hearts have become so hardened that they prefer death to salvation. Notice that they know God's identity precisely. They know he is God the Father referring to the wrath of the Lamb. Revelation 6 verse 17 The Great Greek 
Mega's Day of the Lord's Wrath marks a transition point in the tribulation with the seventh seal. Approximately three and a half years into the seven-year tribulation period, the earth will experience what Jesus called Great Tribulation, Matthew 24 verse 21, Great Distress. The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah speaks of the Great Tribulation in stark terms. 7 Alas! For that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's, Israel's trouble, but he the believers of Israel shall be saved out of it. Jeremiah 30 verse 7, KJV During this time many people, Jews and Gentiles will be saved all under Israel's gospel of the kingdom during this period. Of course, the dispensation of the grace of God will have previously ended with the rapture of the Gentile church to heaven at least three and a half years earlier. These six seals lead to the intensified second half, Great Tribulation, that comes with the seventh seal, and the seven trumpets judgments, when Antichrist takes up residence in the third temple as God. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day of God's wrath shall not come, except there come a falling away first a departure first, and that men of sin Antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition, for who opposeth God and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 4 KJV This will then bring on the full wrath by God's hand in the seven trumpet and seven bowl judgments. These include divinely ordained supernatural catastrophes to come upon the earth, wherein a total of February thirds of the earth's population, including 2 slash 3 s of Israel, will die. Part 9 Logic Applied to Scripture as to the Rapture's Timing In the New Testament, the clearest indication we get in the timing our departure or rapture relative to the wrath to come is found here. Ye Thessalonian Gentiles, turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, 10 and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he God the Father raised from the dead, even Jesus, which has delivered us from the wrath to come 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9 to 10 KJV. The Greek word translated from in this passage is apo. When taken literally, it means we of the body of Christ are to be delivered away from the time of the place of and anything related to the wrath to come. This denotes both our departure from and separation from the the wrath to come. This is supported by Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, declaring, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9, KJV Some folks say that you cannot use God's wrath interchangeably with the Great Tribulation. They are not the same, they say. And they are right, the two terms are not synonymous. Actually, God's wrath concerns the entire seven-year tribulation period of which the Great Tribulation is only the second three, and a half years long portion of God's wrath is details with Rev chapters 11 to 13. Yet, the Great Tribulation is introduced here back in Revelation 6 verse 17. For the great day of age of his God's wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6 verse 17, KJV The advocates of a post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture, such as Marv Rosenthal, try to deny this but the scripture is clear. The time of God's wrath begins with the first of the seven seal judgments extending for the whole of the seven years of the tribulation. The bowl or vile judgments that come later do not begin the time of his wrath, they conclude it, filling up the wrath of God, Revelation 15 verse 1. Our being delivered from the time, the place and any relation to God's wrath means the church has to depart and disappear from planet earth before the Rev 6 initial seven seal judgments. A test from the Old Testament scripture and Paul's words. Now let us apply a test. Consider this, could a believer, sitting alone on the proverbial desert isle with nothing but the scriptures, and having no preconceived ideas, conclude that there is such a thing as a pre-tribulation rapture just from reading about it? Well, from Isaiah 13 verses 9 to 13, and Amos 5 verses 18 to 20 below. He would learn that God is in fact going to judge the earth for its sins in a terrible time called, the day of the Lord, when he will pour out his wrath upon mankind. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Ten for the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, 
and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. 11 And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. 12 I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. 13 Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Isaiah 13 verses 9 to 13, KJV. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord! To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. 19 As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. 20 Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? Even very dark and no brightness in it. Amos 5 verses 18 to 20, KJV. Then, reading Matt, 20 for colon 21-22 would tell him that this time of God's wrath would be so bad that if the Lord didn't put a stop to it no one would survive. But the Lord will put a stop to it by returning in power and glory. Since he would know that the Lord has not returned yet, he would know that God's wrath is still in the future. When he gets to Paul's 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9 to 10, he would see a pretty clear statement. Jesus delivers the people of the body of Christ from the coming wrath. In the who, what, where, when, and why methodology of the investigative reporter he would have the who, Jesus, the what, rescues, his body, and the when from before the time of the coming wrath. Reading on he would come to 1 Thess, 4 hours 15 minutes and 17 seconds, and get the where from earth to the clouds, and in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 he would learn the why, because those of his body, are not appointed to wrath. 12 I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. 13 Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Isaiah 13 verses 9 to 13, KJV. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we the grace believers, which are alive and remain alive, unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, precede, them which are asleep dead in their graves. 16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 17, KJV. From the verses immediately above our hypothetical Bible student could also answer another of the investigative reporter's question asking, how exactly will the rapture happen? 4. From the verses immediately below our hypothetical Bible student could also answer another of the investigative reporter's question asking, when does the rapture relative to the Antichrist appearing? 3. Let no man deceive you grace believers by any means, for that day the tribulation period shall not come, except until there come a falling away, the physical departure of the body of Christ first, and that men of sin Antichrist be revealed, the son of perdition, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, KJV, see part 6 of this study series for a full explanation. From there he would logically conclude that, since a people group will be rescued around the time of the coming day of God's wrath, and before the appearance of the Antichrist, and since we are not appointed to wrath, then the grace believer's rescue has to precede the time of the day of God's wrath. Thus, the resurrected Lord Jesus himself will come down from heaven into our earth's atmosphere and suddenly snatch the dead and living believers up and away from plant earth before the Antichrist. Thus, they join him to dwell and reign with him in the heavenly places forever, 2 Timothy 2 verses 12 and 2 Corinthians 5 colon 1. Then from 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 1 to 5 our hypothetical Bible student would learn that as a child of the light, he would never know the exact timing of the coming rapture, but that the rapture would precede the coming night of the Lord's day of wrath. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. 3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, the unbelievers of the night, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. For but ye you grace believers, brethren, are not in darkness the coming night, that that day should overtake you as a thief. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 2-4 KJV 
Below we note in verse 3 how that during the prophesied, day of the Lord, the masses of the world will have assumed the Antichrist to be a peacemaker, as he confirms the covenant of Daniel 9 verse 27 with Israel, and its neighbor countries, to supposedly protect Israel for seven years. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Two for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Three for when the Antichrist submissive followers shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them upon Antichrist submissive followers, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. For but ye, brethren believers, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Five ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 1 to 5, KJV. Of course, there are many more passages we could reference, but I think we have made the point and answered the question. I believe that since our hypothetical Bible student has no one to persuade him differently, he would assume that what he is reading is to be taken contextually and literally. And if that is the case, then the pre-tribulation rapture position is the only conclusion he could logically come to, because every other position would require a moderate to massive reinterpretation of scripture. I contend that left alone to work this out with only the Holy Spirit, as his guide he would expect to be raptured before the wrath of God begins in Rev 6. You see, God did not write the Bible to confuse us, but to inform us. It is mankind that has gotten everything all mixed up. If you give the Holy Spirit a clear-minded student, uncontaminated by man's opinions and denominational prejudices, he will bring that person to the understanding of the rapture that is most consistent with a literal interpretation of scripture. And that requires a pre-tribulation rapture. Part 10 is come up hither about the rapture of the body of Christ's. From is Revelation for verse 1 a preview of the rapture by Sean Brousseau. In a sincere attempt to prove a pre-tribulation rapture, that is, that the church the body of Christ, will be corporately resurrected and taken up into heaven before the seven-year tribulation begins, people will appeal to the book of the Revelation. Specifically, they seize Revelation for verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Is this verse typical of the rapture? Dr. Schofield has the following footnote for Revelation for verse 1, This call seems clearly to indicate the fulfillment of 1 Thess 4. 14 to 17, the word church does not again occur in the Revelation till all is fulfilled. That note of the dear brother is quite puzzling, my friends. There is no clear connection between the two passages, unless, of course, you generalize. For example, while they are both supernatural ascensions into heaven, while they both include a church, and while both involve a trumpet, that is as far as you can relate them, and even these are not close associations when you actually study them. There are much more definitive dissimilarities than comparisons. In this author's view, the following points make a much more compelling case, one that contradicts the notion that Revelation for verse 1 is a preview of the rapture. Thessalonians involves a resurrection, glorified bodies given to saints, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16 to 17, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 58. Revelation is silent about John getting any new body. Thessalonians has a shout, voice, and a trumpet, with two blows, trumps of a trumpet, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16. Revelation features a voice as it were of a trumpet. There is no literal trumpet in Revelation, only a simile, a voice likened to a trumpet. Thessalonians involves a group of people, some living and others deceased, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 17. Revelation has a single, living man, John, not one dead individual is present there. Thessalonians speaks of an archangel present, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16. There is no archangel, or any angel, in Revelation 4 verse 1. The words spoken to John in Revelation 4 verse 1 are of particular interest here, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. While the Bible does not say exactly what Jesus Christ will utter in his shout in Thessalonians, we can be sure that he will not say, I will shew thee things to come. The rapture in Thessalonians is not meant to give prophetic insight, a glimpse into the future, this is nonsense. 
However, the Apostle John, a spiritual leader in Israel, Galatians 2 verse 9, is receiving direct revelation from God concerning end times. He is God's chosen vessel to deliver the capstone of the nation Israel's prophetic information, the book of the Revelation. In stark contrast, the body of Christ in no way receives end time, prophetic, messages at or after the rapture. The dispensational design of scripture must be recognized and respected. Notwithstanding the difficulties already enumerated, there are major problems in attempting to connect Revelation for verse 1 with 1 Thessalonians for verses 14 to 17. Why would we expect to see a preview of the rapture by appealing to John when he did not even have a ministry to the church the body of Christ? Never does John write about the church the body of Christ that is strictly Pauline terminology. What are we doing consulting a circumcision apostle, John, Galatians 2 verse 9, to provide us with information about us Gentiles? Does not Ephesians 3 verse to say, the dispensation of the grace of God, was committed to Paul so he could give it to us Gentiles? What details would John give about a set of doctrine he did not even receive? The rapture is the special coming of Christ to end the dispensation of grace. If the dispensation of grace was given to Paul, and Ephesians 3 verse 2 says it was, then it is only logical to conclude that Paul alone would write about that special coming of Christ to close the dispensation of grace. All the confusion comes as the result of not understanding the three churches in the Bible, Mosaic Church, Acts 7 verse 38, Messianic Church, Matthew 16 verses 16 to 18, Mystery Church, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 9. Today in every facet of Christian thought and word, there is a general reference to the church. In books, sermons and so on, preachers and teachers talk about the church, the church, the church. They are referring to present-day Christians corporately, but this is problematic because they have dropped the qualifier. They have been conditioned, and they are conditioning others, to believe the only church in the Bible is the group of Christians today. The word church is a generic term, and it should be qualified as much as possible. There is more than one church in the Bible than the church, the body of Christ. If we are talking about Christians today, we should say the church, the body of Christ, as much as possible. The term, the church, is not enough. This is why even, church age, is misleading, grace age, or mystery age, is a better term. If we do not make this distinction between churches clear, our audience will always approach the Bible with the one church mentality. A similar confusion is the one gospel in the Bible notion. This contradicts Romans 2 verse 16, Galatians 2 verse 7, Luke 18 verses 31 to 34, and so on. Another mixed up idea is that of there is only one baptism in scripture, water, water, water. This contradicts Matthew 3 verses 11 and 1 Corinthians 12 13 and others. Dear friends, we need to break away from shallow Bible thinking and get into the meat of scripture. Let us not just repeat what others say. The most basic error from which all the above others descend is a failure to study, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Prophecy is not separated from mystery, Peter is not divided from Paul, law is not separated from grace, heaven is not divided from earth, Israel is not separated from the body of Christ. We see the word church in Acts 2 verse 47 and conclude it must be the church the body of Christ. Roman Catholics see church in Matthew 16 verse 18 and they believe it applies to people alive today. They do not see it as Messiah's church, which is what Matthew 16 verse 16 says it is. It refers to those Jews who accepted Jesus as Messiah slash Christ in his earthly ministry. There is no church the body of Christ until we come to Paul's ministry Acts chapter 9 onward. We do not read about the church the body of Christ in scripture unless in Paul's epistles, Romans through Philemon. If we get this straight, the Bible will become so astoundingly clear. There are various other associated problems concerning the church the body of Christ being inserted into the book of the Revelation. One of these, just as popular as Revelation for verse 1 being the rapture, involves chapters 2 and 3 of Revelation symbolizing the various stages of the body of Christ throughout the 2000 years of church history. Church history, it is said, ends by the opening of Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 supposedly being the rapture, remember. 
Again, this is to mix prophecy and mystery, to fail to understand that John was not sent to us Gentiles. Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13. If Paul does not mention something, it does not concern us, and it is not what God is doing today. To then go grab something from John's ministry, and try to stick it on us is to abuse the dispensational boundaries so clearly evident in the scriptures. It is to destroy Paul's ministry, and John's ministry. It is to wreak havoc on the Bible text, to distort it beyond simplicity and verity, 2 Peter 3 verses 15 to 16. Make no mistake, my dear readers. There is most definitely a pre-tribulation rapture, an evacuation of the body of Christ from earth before the Antichrist is revealed and begins those last seven years. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 makes that so very clear, as does 1 Thessalonians chapters 1, 4, and 5. Therefore, we do not need revelation for verse 1 to prove a pre-tribulation rapture. In fact, as we may very well know, revelation is tribulation ground. To find the rapture in the revelation is to fall into the trap in assuming the rapture occurs during the tribulation. Part 11 The rapture is only seen in Paul's epistles. As we have seen, the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, is clearly seen in these verses. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent precede them which are asleep and dead in their graves. 16 For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17 Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up raptured together with them the risen dead believers in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 18, KJV. 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery, Greek. Mustarian, a god planned secret, we shall not all sleep a dead in the grave, but we the living shall all be changed, transformed, 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we the living shall be changed, transformed. 53 For this corruptible body must put on incorruption, and this mortal body must put on immortality. 54 So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, KJV. For our conversation citizenship is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, 21 Who shall change our vile, corruptible physical body, that it may be fashioned, transformed, like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Philippians 3 verses 20 to 2 Here above in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 15, there is another issue that points to a pre-tribulation rapture, and it comes to us in the form of a clue scene at the beginning of this rapture passage. Verse 15 opens with the phrase, By the word of the Lord. There simply is northwest other place in the New Testament where Jesus speaks through anyone concerning the dead being risen, resurrected from the dead and the living being caught up raptured together with them, transformed to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 17. Jesus of Nazareth never says anything like that, nor does he even imply such a thing anywhere in the four gospels narratives when he was speaking only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matt 1524 about the events of his second coming. Note that no heaven is mentioned when Jesus said this in Matt 24. The actual context for these verses was set earlier in Matt 24. In verse 31, below, concerning Jesus gathering his elect, for they will reign with Christ in the kingdom on earth after the tribulation period. And he, the Lord, shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24 verse 31, KJV. The four winds of heaven refer to the four compass points as applies to the whole earth. These elect will survive the tribulation period on earth, they will endure to the end, v16, having been told to flee and hide in the mountains, v16, in a place prepared of God for his elect to survive. 
They are safely there from the time of the abomination that make desolate mid-trib, when Antichrist occupies the temple until the end when Jesus returns to judge the nations and set up his kingdom. Thus, Jesus went on to say this about the outcome. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye, Israel, know not what hour your Lord doth come, Matthew 24 verses 40 to 42. The above passage, Matthew 24 verses 40 to 42, is usually mistakenly interpreted by most fundamentalists slash evangelical Christians and their pastor slash teachers so as to apply to our Lord's coming for the members of the Gentile church, which is his body, at the rapture. They ignore the fact that Jesus when he is speaking to Israel, Matthew 15 verse 24, about Israel and the nations at the time of the end of the tribulation period, when he will judge the nations and determine who will not and who will go on to enter the millennial kingdom on earth. Alive. The prize for Israel's believers is the kingdom on earth, not heaven. Yet, they erroneously say Matt, 24, 40-42 describes the rapture of the church, the body of Christ. They say, two will be working in the field, when one will be taken to heaven, but heaven is not mentioned at all. They then say the other is left behind to go through the day of God's wrath. They then say the same with two women who may be grinding side by side at the mill, saying one will be caught up to be with the Lord, and the other left behind to go through the tribulation wrath of God. But this view above is exactly wrong. We will consider this in more detail as we proceed. First, it is clear that this passage has nothing to do with the rapture of the body of Christ, to be with Christ in heaven. Again, the prize for Israel's believers is the kingdom on earth, not heaven. The truth of our Lord's coming for the members of his body, at the rapture was a mystery, a secret, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 51, that was first revealed by the glorified Lord to and through Paul as the one, apostle to the Gentiles, Rom 11 13. The rapture applies to the body of Christ only, not Israel. You can read Paul's words concerning the catching away, commonly called the rapture, in his 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 58, and 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 18. No other Bible writer addresses the rapture except Paul, as the apostle, writing to the Gentile, church, which is his body. But sadly, most people go to Matthew 24 and read from Jesus' words spoken to his Jewish disciples about Israel's destiny, assuming he is talking about the rapture. So in Matthew 24, when taken in context, it is evident that the passage cannot refer to the rapture. You must read the verses before, noting the context. Note that Jesus is speaking to Israel, Matt 15 24, 10,5-6, about the prize of the coming millennial kingdom on earth, read Matt, 2400 hours 14, as was long promised to Israel only. It had been widely prophesied that Israel will ultimately inherit, and enjoy the restored Davidic kingdom on earth with Christ as the eternal Lord and King of Kings. Let us now consider Matthew 24 verses 40 to 42 in more detail. True, the passage says, the one shall be taken, and the other left, but taken to where or what, and how exactly will the one be taken? What will be of those left on earth, not taken? By carefully looking at the verses and the context immediately preceding our text in Matthew 24 verses 40 to 42, it is evident that the coming of Christ to earth is first to judge, and to determine, who will enter in his millennial reign on earth. Jesus said what will happen can be likened to what did happen in, the days of Noah, Matt 34 37-38, and Lot. Jesus said in the days of Noah people ate and drank, married and gave away again in marriage until the flood came. They ignored Noah's preaching. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So the lost unbelievers were taken by the flood they died, but not Noah and his family. So these lost unbelieving people were not taken away to glory. They were taken away in death by the flood. Noah's family, as believers, survived the flood judgment alive. Scripture says they were left on earth after the flood judgment to then, replenish the earth, Genesis 9 verse 1. Note that Matt, 24-40-41, is a continuation of this illustration citing Noah, and the flood judgment. 
It is evident that those taken in Noah's day were taken away in the flood judgment, while Noah and his family were left to live on to replenish the earth. Thus, Jesus is telling his Jewish disciples those to be taken, at the wheel, and in the field during the tribulation will die in judgment under the wrath of God poured out, while the believing survivors of tribulation, as kingdom gospel believers, will go on alive to enter and live in the promised messianic millennial kingdom on earth. This interpretation alone is consistent with the whole context in which we find Matt, 24 40-41. So like the days of Noah's family, the believers of Israel who survived the coming tribulation judgments alive, will, at Christ's return, go on to enter into and populate the millennial kingdom on earth. There is no being caught up to heaven to be seen in these Matt, 24 verses. The promise of being caught up to heaven only applies to the church, body of Christ, as found only in Paul's epistles. Great confusion would be avoided if the truth of the rapture of the body of Christ, to be with Christ were recognized to be what it is. It was a divinely ordained secret plan that was first revealed to Paul concerning the Gentile church, which is his body of this present dispensation of the grace of God. The fact is that none of the assumed rapture verses thought to be found in the Gospels, not in Luke 21, not in Matt, 24 and such, have anything to do with the rapture of the Gentile church of the body of Christ. Only Paul as the apostle to the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13, writes of our eternal destiny with Christ, taking us to dwell, eternal in the heavens, 2 cor, 5 colon 1 b. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle and our physical body were dissolved and decayed, we have a building new spirit body built of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, KJV Part 12 The Pauline Mystery of Mysteries Unveiled Paul frequently uses the word mystery, which is the Greek musterion, meaning a secret. In most cases of its use by Paul he is referring to a God-ordained, God-planned, God-kept secret that was not revealed until it was first revealed to Paul. For us. One for this cause I Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, two if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you ward, three how that by revelation he Jesus from heaven have made known unto me Paul of the mystery of secret as I wrote afore in few words, for whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, five which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. By the Spirit, Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 5, KJV. One of those mysteries is the secret of the rapture of the Gentile, body of Christ, that was revealed to Paul for the members of the body of Christ, before the seven-year tribulation period. 51 Behold, I shew you a mystery, Greek. Mustarian, a God-planned secret, we shall not all sleep a dead in the grave, but we the living shall all be changed, transformed, 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we the living shall be changed transformed. 53 For this corruptible body must put on incorruption, and this mortal body must put on immortality. 54 So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 55 O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15 verses 51 to 55, KJV. We know from Paul that the believers of the Gentile, body of Christ, consist both of those who were formerly seen of God as Jews, and the Gentiles, they are now one, all humans are seen as Gentiles without racial distinction. So to God today there are no Jewish, Italian, Irish, Swedish or any other racial distinctions recognized in the body of Christ, as Paul wrote here. 28 There is neither Jew nor Greek Gentile, there is neither bond slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one I in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 28, KJV This then leads us to the mystery of mysteries. Like the secret of the rapture that was revealed to Paul to comfort us, we hear below in 1 COR 2 colon 7 8 have the greatest mystery secret. This mystery concerns the key to the Christian's faith. It is the fact that God kept the plan and meaning of the cross a secret until Christ from heaven revealed it directly to Paul for us, cf Galatians 1 verse 12. 
7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery secret, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, 8. Which none of the princes, the Roman, and Jewish leaders of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8, KJV. The phrase, none of the princes, the Roman, and Jewish leaders of this world knew, means it was necessary that the mystery of the cross be kept secret. Why was the cross kept secret? This is because these evil men were used of Satan to crucify and kill our Lord and Savior, but they were duped of God. Now, after the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection, consider that in retrospect, these men and Satan no doubt would now prefer to have a living uncrucified Jesus still on earth. For now, the crucified Lord Jesus resurrected spirit of life now lives in million and millions of believers, multiplying the family of God, and this foretells the Satan ultimate doom. So, just as with the rapture of the body of Christ, God kept the meaning of the cross a secret, so that Satan and his princes, those who rule on earth the corrupt national and religious leaders, and Satan's fallen spirit princes in heaven, the evil fallen angelic host, would collude and cooperating to crucify the Lord Jesus. Paul then received revelation of the riches of the inheritance that we enjoy by our faithful union with Christ, all of which flows to us from the cross of Christ, in his resurrected spirit of life. 17 That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, Christ, 18 The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance, now I am the saints, Ephesians 1 verses 17 to 18, KJV. Part 13, Summary Conclusion Considering all the foregoing of this 13-part study series, we can conclude that Jesus of Nazareth never refers to or taught about the rapture of the Gentile church that Paul calls the body of Christ. Yet, Paul received all this rapture revelation directly by the word of the Lord, Thess, for 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, precede, them which are asleep and dead in their graves. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 15, KJV Some dismiss the phrase, by the word of the Lord, saying that Paul was speaking of some conversation Paul had with the Lord, which does not appear in scripture. But remember, 1 Thessalonians was probably one of Paul's first written communications, undertaken about 51 AD. Recall also that Paul, while on the backside of the Arabian desert for four years after his conversion, received direct revelations, plural, from the resurrected and ascended Lord in heaven. For I, Paul, neither received it the details of Paul's gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20 verse 24 of men, neither was I taught it, but by rather the direct revelation of from Jesus Christ. Galatians 1 verse 12, KJV. Some then say Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21, below, is an Old Testament hint or shadow of the rapture of the church, which is his body. But this is not so since only Paul received the revelation of the rapture of the Gentile body of Christ to heaven. This Isaiah passage actually referred to the believers of Israel in the first resurrection of Revelation 20 verse 6, which occurs at the end of the seven-year tribulation period at the beginning of the millennial reign of Christ. All we have to do is read the prophecy of Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21 in their context. 19 But your dead, Israel's believers now asleep their graves, will live, their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust of grave, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning, the earth will give birth to her dead. Meanwhile, at the mid-tribulation the abomination of desolation, of Satan occupying the temple as God, the Lord will speak to Israel as seen below. 20 Go, my people, Israel, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you, hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. 21 C, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. See also Revelation 12 verses 6 and 11. Notice how in verse 20 how the pronouns change from second person when God speaks of his, my people, to third person when he speaks of the people of the earth. This speaks of two groups that are different. Those called my people Israel are told to enter your rooms because the others, called the people of earth, are going to be punished for their sins in a period of time called his wrath. 
Matt 20 for colon 12 21. Not by any stretch of the imagination has Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21 at all been literally fulfilled for Israel. Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21 is an end of times prophecy that promises, verse 20, the hiding of God's believing remnant of Israel during the final three and a half years of tribulation wrath that is unleashed upon the people of earth. After that, we have the subsequent awakening and raising of the believing dead of Israel from their graves. Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21 was written about 2,750 years ago. The hiding of the Jews in the desert on earth will likely be at Petra in the old land of Edom, today's Jordan, at the beginning of the second half of the tribulation called the Great Tribulation, Revelation 12 verse 14. Isaiah 26 verse 19 cannot in any way be considered as a picture of our rapture to heaven. This passage has no resurrection to heaven accompanying it. The mentioned awakening of the dead messianic believers of Israel takes place at the end of the Great Tribulation when those Israel will co-reign with Christ on earth in the kingdom, Revelation 20 verse 6, 5, 10. We compare Isaiah 26 verses 19 to 21 with what Paul wrote of the rapture in 1 Thess, 4 to 5, noting the differences. Isaiah as a prophet of Israel wrote, But Israel your dead will live, their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning, the earth will give birth to her dead. Paul, the dead in Christ will rise first. 1 Thess 4 16 Isaiah concerning the wrath Israel will endure. Isaiah wrote concerning the wrath mankind will face, see, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. Paul, while people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them, the unbelievers suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. 2 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 These above may look somewhat alike but the wording is different. They are describing similar but different events. Thus, as we have seen in this study series, there are sound theological reasons why the Gentile Church of the Body of Christ will be raptured before the end times seven-year tribulation judgments begin. A key understanding is that the Lord keeps Israel and the Church separate, never dealing with both at the same time, Acts 15 verses 13 to 18, or in the same manner. If the primary purpose of Daniel's 70th week is to finish fulfilling the six promises to Israel as seen in Daniel 9 verse 24, then the church, the body of Christ, has to have disappeared, departing from the plant earth. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city in the last week of years, T.O. finished the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity of Israel, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Daniel 9 verse 24, KJV. Another is the fact that the Gentiles' grace church was purified at the cross, at which time all the punishment due us was borne by the Lord himself for us. From that time forward the church is considered by God to be as righteous as he is, 2 COR 5 17, 21. The idea that the church needs to undergo some discipline or improvement in order to become worthy to dwell with God is unscriptural and denies the Lord's completed finished work of the cross. The third stated purpose of the Great Tribulation is twofold. 1. To purify Israel and 2. Completely destroy the unbelieving peoples of the nations, cf Jeremiah 30 verses 1 to 11. The church, the Gentile body of Christ, is not destined for either of these outcomes. There are also several subtle clues that on their own cannot of themselves be used to support the pre-tribulation position, but which underscore the validity of the clear passages I have just cited concerning Israel being hid from God's wrath. Take for instance the fact that Enoch, who bears a great similarity to the church, disappeared before the great flood. The angels could not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until Lot and his family were clear. Daniel was missing from the fiery furnace, which was a model of the Great Tribulation. When the Lord described his second coming in Luke 17 verses 26 to 29, he said that it would be both like the days of Noah, in which eight souls were preserved in the ark during the flood judgment. Then, as seen in the days of Lot, the unbelieving evil people were taken away by the flood, dying. 
Paul's words that do not require prior knowledge of the pre-tribulation rapture, consider 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9 to 10. For they themselves shew of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, 10 and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1 verses 9 to 10, KJV. Of course, we know that some people just will not be convinced until we can show them how the rapture will precede the great tribulation in those exact words. Obviously, such a verse does not exist. Too bad for them because in 2023, trials likely are coming to Christians, and it is my prayer that this study series will help retribulation believers to be ready for it when it arrives. For us, the cross now, the crown of life comes later. Your King James Bible is very clear, believing Christians living in this grace age of the Gentile church called, the body of Christ, will not see a single day of the tribulation, judgments of God. Nevertheless, the Bible is quite clear that Christians living in these last days of the grace age should expect tribulations, pressure, as a condition. We are not to be surprised when it comes. Paul wrote to the suffering Corinthians saying, I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before, that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech toward you, great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort, I am exceeding joyful in all our tribulation in Greek. Flipsis Pressure Persecution 2 Corinthians 7 verses 3 to 4 KJV I write this to prepare you for these last days of the grace age. We need to have the proper biblical and understanding and awareness of what may be coming to us. But of course, the first thing we need is to understand is that the seven years, tribulation period events have almost nothing to do with the expected persecution and trials that we as grace believers may yet face. We see it already. Paul tells us this is the lot of every Christian living in this church age of the grace of God. In 2023, trials and difficulties may come. It is my prayer that the blessed hope of his coming at the rapture will comfort you. 18 Wherefore comfort one another with these words. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18, KJV.